Hello everyone and welcome to the channel. I'm Emmanuel, I'm a Boeing 737 pilot and a member of PMDG's tech team. In today's video I'm going to show you how to program any FMC, be it Boeing, Airbus, McDonnell Douglas or whatever, in a matter of less than 5 minutes. And to do so we have to look at the general architecture of any flight management computer system regardless which aircraft it is fitted to. Now all of them basically have two different parts. You have the lateral navigational part and the vertical navigation part. Vertical navigation in this point includes any performance related information and any information related to the aircraft's vertical navigation. Now, in most FMCs they follow a certain set of logic and today we are going to investigate this in the examples of the Boeing 737 and the Airbus A320 and the McDonnell Douglas MD82. Now we are going to start with the Boeing FMC because it kinda is a bit of everything in that it has a very clear distinction between the lateral and vertical navigational parts. But I'm going to show you later on how the same logic applies to the other aircraft types as well. Once you understand this basic logic you will be able to program any FMC in a matter of minutes, regardless if it is a Boeing, an Airbus, or whatever else there may be in the future of Microsoft Flight Simulator. So, let's get started. We start, every airplane has sort of an identification screen that shows you what aircraft type it is, what navigation data set is fitted, and what engine is fitted. From there on, you usually have some sort of an entry where you need to align the IRS on, but if the plane doesn't even have an IRS, thinking MD-80, that part may be missing. So from there on we go on to the route. Now this is the first integral part over here, and basically in all of them you enter the departure airport and the destination airport and some sort of a flight number, because that is just what the computer will need. So in this case that's the information we need. Now let's talk about the route. Every airplane will need a standard departure, an end route sector and an arrival. So for us we're going to start by entering the standard departure which in this case is going to be the Dodan 9 Tango departure as we can see in the flag line down here. From there on the route is always the same thing. It is always going to be an airway or a direct and a waypoint. So basically where do I want to go and how do I want to go there? The where I want to go is the to part of the route. I want to go to the waypoint Bombi and how do I want to get there via the airway Yankee 853. Now the next one I want to go to, first of all how do I want to go to the next place via Tango 104 and where do I want to go? I want to go towards Rock Hill. And that's it. Now we need to define the arrival and that is going to be as easy as it gets. In our case we take the Rock Hill 26 transition. We go to route and the, the majority of FMCs will require you to activate this somehow. In the Boeing you have an activate prompt and press execute. In the Airbus it's going to ask you for the insert prompt. And that basically concludes the lateral part of our navigation. The next is the vertical part or the performance. And now that the lateral part is finished, the airplane directs us on into the performance. And over here we always look for the same information. How economic do we want to be? AKA what cost index do we need? What kind of reserve fuel do we need? In our case 3.2 tons as we can see in the flight plan down here. How heavy are we going to be? 62.5 tons. And then how high do we want to fly? In our case flight level 350. The last piece of information that the plane will want to know is the takeoff data. Now 
Depending on the airplane the takeoff data might not necessarily be within the FMC, it could also for example be in a separate computer somewhere in the airplane. For example in the MD-80 we have a separate thrust rating computer on the glass shield. Uh, sorry, on the main panel. Now, in our case, we're simply going to enter some data for demonstrational purposes here. So, we set our takeoff thrust, then we go to the takeoff page, we enter a flap setting, the trim setting and the takeoff speeds. So, remember the basic architecture and notice how the airplane is actually leading us through the architecture. We basically start on the identification page. From here on, the plane leads us by itself to the position in it, and from there to the route. When we are done with the route, it leads us to the performance pages. And that is basically the entire FMC setup. Now, let's go over to the Airbus and see how the exact same logic is going to apply there as well. Okay, here we are in the A320. Now, let's once again run over the same setup sequence and notice how it is exactly the same as it is in the Boeing. The plane is looking for the very same data that we need it. So, let's start right off. The first thing that the FMC is going to greet us with when we go on the FMGC is the identification page. And here we have the aircraft model, we have the engine model and the nav database. We also have engine performance or airplane performance information, but that is not as important. For us. So, from there on, we go to the initialization page. And over here, we basically enter the very same information. We're going from Düsseldorf towards Munich. And our flight number is going to be, to, in this case now, Air Berlin 123. Now, on the Airbus init page, it asks us for the alternate airport as well, which is something the Boeing did not want to know from us. Now, is that a significant difference? Well, not really. Also, up here we have cost index and cruise level information already, so since the plane asks us for it, let's give it that kind of information. So, now we have the IRS in it on the very first screen, which basically serves us to align the IRS, just like the Boeing did. So, now that the airplane knows from and to where we want to go, we go over to the flight plan page and from there we enter the departure and en route and arrival information. So the way the Airbus does this is looking a bit different, but it is the very same piece of information. We go on the airport, click on departure and now we first of all select the runway and to sit. From there on, we go into the menu to access the airways, like over here. And then we once again give it the airways that it needs to know, which are once again the 853. And now we have the same via and two prompts. How do, you, do we want to go somewhere and where do we want to go? And once again, by entering the same pieces of information, the airplane basically knows where it wants to go. Now, this is exactly the same piece of information that the Boeing wanted to know as well. The final thing we need to enter is the landing runway, and once again, we're going to select the same data. Now, what you are going to notice is that things look a little bit different in the Airbus, but now that the route is entered, we basically have to give it the performance information, and we do that on the init B page. And on here, once again, it is the same kind of data that the aircraft is looking for. Now, a little difference here is that the airplane is asking for its center of gravity as well, but remember how we also inserted that in the Boeing aircraft, even though on a different page. So, same kind of data. And of course, the fuel is something that it's going to need as well. And the rest of the data the plane can basically calculate by itself. So now that we've inserted our weights, and now that we have already on the previous page inserted the cost index and the cruise level, the last thing that the FMC wants to know from us is the takeoff performance information. So over here, again, it is going to be the same data that we entered in the Boeing. We need a flap setting. Now in here we actually need to enter our stabilizer trim, 
rather than the Boeing giving us the data, but we can just about read it right from here by knowing our center of gravity. So that is basically not exactly the same, but about the same piece of information. And we, of course, enter a flex temperature. And I typed something wrong, okay. Do that once again. Here we go. The last thing we need is the takeoff speeds, and then our Airbus FMC is basically fully set up. So, once again, the same pieces of information entered. Now, I'm going to show you a third example from the MD-80 to make the structure entirely clear. So, let's move on to that. Okay, here we are for third and last FMC, which this time is going to be the MD-82. So, let's go right into it. We end up on an island page where we start with the model number, the engine version and the navigation database. We also have some drag and fuel flow factors like we do on the other aircraft. So, position in it. We need to set the FMC position, which is similar to setting the IRS position on the other aircraft. From here we go on to the route, and once again we are going to enter the same routing. Now, in this particular plane, we don't need to enter a call sign, because it actually uses us that directly from the transponder. So, slight difference once again, but nothing major really. So, we can start by entering a departure airport and the departure runway. And we go on by entering the route once again. And the waypoints. So, once again, things are pretty much exactly the same as they are on the other two aircraft. Now, while I'm entering this, let me quickly give you some sort of an explanation as to why this basically is the same on all aircraft. Once I'm done with that, we will change over to an airplane with an FMC that I've basically never used before. And that is going to be the CJ-4. Now, I've never really flown it. I've never really liked it, to be honest. So, you get the idea in where this is going. Now, first of all, as you can see, the information that we're entering over here is once again almost identical to the layout of the Boeing 737. Which is the reason why we can do this pretty much all together. The small difference here is the fuel schedule and how the fuel is going to be used, but again, that is just a small type-specific difference, but not really a major difference in the information that is being entered. Also over here it asks us for two more pieces of information, which are optional, just like in the 737, which is cruise wind and the temperature deviation, and you remember the Airbus, it was optional as well. So once we're done entering the route and the performance information, we finally get to the takeoff page, and as I told you in the earlier parts of this video, we're going to enter the flex temperature over here on the computers. Now we can see the number over here, and can change it over here. Let's say we want 55 degrees temperature, and then we're just going to enter the takeoff speed once again over here, like in any other airplane. So, why do we have these major differences then? Did you really believe me that I was about to mention a major difference? There simply is none. And the reason for that is that all aircraft obey the same physics. We always need to go somewhere, so we need to route, and we always need the same vertical planning information. And since any airplane obeys the same rules of physics, we need to know the weight, we need to know how economic we want to be, as in which cost index we need, and we finally need to know the reserve fuels and of course the cruising levels and for the takeoff it's basically always the same data as well so that's just about how easy it is now let's go ahead and prove my theory by actually taking out an airplane that i've never used before which is going to be the cj4 and here we are let's put my challenge to the test so I don't remember having ever flown the CJ-4. If I did, then I've absolutely forgotten about it. In other words, I also have pretty much no clue about this FMS. So let's start proving a theory. This is the welcome page, so to say. We've got the nav data here, and we don't have any aircraft type, but this is page 1 out of 2. Where is next page? 
here. Doesn't work? Okay. Well, we are pretty much greeted with the same information though. We see the um, active nav data. The only thing I'm missing here is the airplane type, but maybe that's hidden elsewhere. So let's go ahead. Performance in it. Yep. Set position to GNSS and down here set position. Okay. So we click that and that's the position initialized. Okay. Flight plan. Yep. That looks fairly... That looks... Uh, I wanted to say fairly similar to what I know and indeed it pretty much seems to be. Oh, here's that stuff entered. Now we have execute over here, okay, and the buttons here. So, oh, pretty much the same information. And we have flight number here as well. So let's also put that in. So, departure's arrival, and two, three left, Doden 9 Tango. See how it's pretty much exactly the same? Execute, and then we go back to... Okay, this wants to bring me to Lex, but that is not what I want. Let's go back to flight plan. That looked... Yeah, this is what I've been searching for. So, once again, same thing. I want to go via this airway and to this waypoint and then I want to go via this airway to this waypoint. Uh, how can I get back? That's it. And execute. So, let's enter an arrival. Okay, index looks good. Arrival. 28 left. And. Yeah, I've got my transition. Execute that. And that's it. Okay, so how do we get to the performance? Let's go back here. And yeah, performance in it. So, it basically guides me over once again. So, we have, like, two passengers, 200 pounds of cargo, and growth weight, zero fuel weight down there. Let's compare that with the plan, 11.9. Okay, so I've just entered a little bit less over here. But it's the same kind of information that the airplane is looking for, like it is on all the other aircraft. Okay, so now it leads me to either VNAV setup or takeoff. So let's start with a VNAV setup. Transition level, target speed. Yeah, that looks pretty similar. And then the takeoff. Okay, this is actually a little bit more complex, it seems. But you get the general idea of. Um, get that weather data. 260 at 12. Temperature 8. And runway slope, I don't know, flight simulator, probably zero. And then we have a next page over here, and there we've got our takeoff speeds, okay. And we'll send, I guess, we send it to the avionics. So yeah, that is pretty much the FMC program to a point where I am fairly certain that I could fly the flight with it. And as we can see, it's pretty much the very same information that we've entered that we've always used. So. Remember the general structure, and you can program any airplane with it. So, first of all, the plane needs to know what it is, which we find on the ident page, then where it is, aligning the navigation system, where do we want to go, and how do we want to go there, and finally, what's our performance going to be, how heavy are we going to be. Alright, and that's pretty much this part of the airplane setup done. Now, I would like to thank you very much for sticking around all the way to the end and hope that you've enjoyed what you've seen in this video. If you did, then do let me know what you think about the theories that I have shown you in this video. Now, I would like to thank you very much for watching, hope that you've learned something today, and I'm looking forward to see you all again in the next one. Thank you very much, and if you want to support the channel, you can do so using the Buy Me Coffee link in the video description below or by becoming a channel member where you are going to get exclusive access to new videos or in first class membership even have the ability to request your own videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you all again very soon.